October is Suicide Prevention Month, and it's time to get comfortable with what can be an uncomfortable conversation. Galen Condi joins me to elevate our thinking in this crucial area for our community when Sunday Edition continues. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sunday Edition. September is Suicide Prevention Month, and I'm very thankful to have one of my favorite thinkers and voices, Galen Condi, joining me for this crucial conversation. Galen is an author, an advocate, she's a speaker and a steward, she's a podcaster, and she's just a force for good in the world. And Galen, welcome to the show, and thanks for joining me. It's great to be on the TV version of our <laughs> conversation. Uh, this is one of those crucial conversations. I don't know anyone anywhere who hasn't been touched by suicide in one way or another and yet we still have all of the stigmas we have all of the challenges it seems to me that we still haven't quite got the conversation right well i think what you lead out with is such an important point it affects everyone and so when we make it about a certain demographic as if it's not our yeah. our issue then i think we already denormalize or mm. or or shift the conversation in a place that we don't it's not a comfortable topic to deal with but the reality is all of us are dealing with mental health or love someone that's struggling with some mental health issues. And so that's kind of everyone on the planet. There's yeah. not a group that this doesn't affect. Yeah, and so as we as we try to normalize that conversation a little bit and broaden it out, how do we start leaning into that just a little more? Because it's easy to say it, it's them, it's their problem, it's this demographic, it's those folks, right. uh, it's not me or mine. How do we change that dynamic? Well, I mean, I'm grateful we get a whole month of like already having it on, yeah. on our hashtags or yeah. on our feed. And so, you know, I hope that when we do content like this, it spurs further conversations. But I like to invite people to do it in their normal life. Yeah. So I invite, especially parents, to tell their teenagers to pull out their phones, start a group text, everyone text an emoji that represents where their mental health is that day. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a million emojis, find a teenager, they'll show you. And right there that shows us that it's not happy, sad, or mad. We have a lot of emotion and a lot of ways in checking in with each other, in the car ride, in the dinner table conversation, but use the phone instead of making it the enemy. Use the tool that maybe your loved one already feels comfortable with. That's good. I want to stick that normalizing for a minute because uh, sometimes I think as parents, we try to be a little too perfect, that, that everything's okay or we got this. How can we be a little more courageously vulnerable and how can that help our young people, especially those who are dealing with some of these mental health challenges? I love that question, especially for the fathers out there. Yeah. When you come home and say you went to therapy that day, right there, it gives permission for the people that love you, that support you, that maybe you're raising or caring for, to have their own conversation with you at a future date. We plant those seeds when we say, you know what, I'm not doing great. For anyone that knows me on social media, the last few months have been tough. Yeah. And some of the feedback I've gotten is that posting about kind of the vulnerability, the changes, the losses that I've gone through has given them permission to have those conversations. Because there's this perception sometimes of like our coworker or someone we see on social media that they're checking all the boxes. Yeah. So especially with our kids, I love when my children say back to me now as adults, you know what, mom, you gave us permission to do the scary thing because you told us it was scary. Yeah, so good, so, so good. Let's talk about it in terms of, of therapy. Sometimes that becomes one of those bad words, uh, but so important, especially when dealing with depression or suicide ideation. How do we change that uh, from what you call taking it from therapy to education? Because education's awesome. Education's awesome, and for, for those that know my story, my sister died by suicide nine years ago, and she was in her 40s, and she had addressed her, her mental health issues and, and sought help. But I would say in the last nine years, the good news is therapy is a much broader term. We're not just talking about traditional talk therapy. EMDR is something that's super effective with trauma response. Um, there's, there's so many modalities out there now that nine years ago, it kind of was just this, there were these three things we considered therapy. So first and foremost, Consider the fact that therapy is education. No one's embarrassed yeah. about getting more education. Right. Right. Like if you said to a friend, I'm going to go back to school, I'm going to work on another degree, everyone would celebrate that. So why aren't we celebrating that when we seek for support, we're actually seeking for education. And, yeah. and that's a, always a positive. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now let's talk about uh, those who are in, we call it the big black hole. They're in that dark space. They're wondering, uh, you have a way of shaping that statement that I think is really important for all of us, whether we're in that space personally struggling or we know someone who's in that space. Yeah, the, the tagline I've probably used most often the last nine years in writing and speaking and doing interviews like this is that we're never going to be better without you. And when I have people reach out to me on social media or I hear back feedback after someone hears a conversation that I have like this, that kind of sticks in their head. And the other thing I like to stay is, say is stay in your body. These bodies of ours are all flawed. We all have things that we wish we could get like 2.0, 3.0 versions of, or in Apple's case, what, 14.0 of, of whatever the bodies are. And, and yet they're gifts for us. Yeah. They're, we are stewards over them. And for some people that are really dealing with a chronic, like my sister, lifetime battle with mental health, that stewardship is heavier. It, it's not just a... a a system that shows up once in a while because there's been a pandemic or there's been a situational loss that creates that depression or anxiety. For some people, this is kind of a lifetime chronic yeah. battle that they've got to deal with. And so for me and for those around me, I like to repeat that phrase often. We will never be better without you. And the reality is we all can get in our heads yeah. where we have those thoughts that like, hey, I've had this failure or I've let these people down and maybe I would be doing everyone a favor if I wasn't here. That's yeah. the great lie yeah. that I hope if no one remembers anything else from this <laughs> conversation, that in your closets or in the car at night when you're yeah. really wondering, I think I'm not actually a benefit to this world anymore. It's just not true. My life's not better without Meg. Yeah. I, I've taken that stewardship of, of her loss and tried to give back in some way, but there's not a day that goes by that I, I feel like my life's better because she's not here. Yeah, so important. These are crucial parts of the conversation. Some great resources. The 988 number, of course, yes. in crisis. I love that it's three digits. Yeah. Like, we don't need to so make it complicated. <laughs> yeah. So good. Gina Lynn Condi, appreciate your stewardship. Thanks for having appreciate me. your leadership uh, in this important topic. Thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you. Well, only those who have been to the brink and back know that crushing, suffocating, mind reeling moment that precedes a suicide attempt. However, many do know the overwhelming discouragement, loss of hope, and feelings of worthlessness that accompany debilitating anxiety and deep depression. For those who find themselves at the bottom of that black hole of depression or despair and may be considering an alternative to life or know someone who's in that space, remember that it's against the laws of nature and nature's God that storms last forever. Storms come and then they go. Are they hard? Yes. Painful? Yes. Frightening? Absolutely. But there is always hope. There's always a way out. And it starts with reaching out. You know, I have framed on my desk a simple story my daughter Sarah gave me. It tells of a guy walking down the street and he falls into a big black hole. The walls are so steep, he's hurt and wounded, he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, hey, can you help me? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down into the hole and moves on. Then a priest comes along. The guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole. I'm hurt. Can you help me? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. Finally, a friend walks by. Hey, can you help me? And the friend jumps down in the hole. He says, what are you, what are you doing? Now we're both down in the hole. The friend says, yeah, I know, but I've been down in this big black hole before, and I know the way out. So remember, you're not alone. There's many of us who've been at the bottom of that big black hole, and we know the way out, and we can find the way out together. So if anyone you care about or you yourself are in a bad place today, remember the 988 Suicide Prevention Line or the Safe UT app. This is a chance for all of us to reach out, to reach together, to link arms, and to get past this once and for all. Thanks for watching Sunday Edition. I'm Boyd Matheson, and as always, remember as you go out into the world today, Make sure you see something that inspires, say something that uplifts, and do something that makes a difference. Music and the Spoken Word is next.